Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. Um, so right off the bat, I feel as if there has been a recent, um, either a falling out, an argument, or something uh, that you, some type of a conflict that you have in your romantic sector. And I feel like a lot of it is, um, you know, harsh words being exchanged between two people, as well as um, issues regarding how to do things. So, you know, you, you might have like a, a certain way about you where you're getting your things done, your priorities, your responsibilities. And the partner that you're dealing with, um, I feel as if they are either minimizing um, the contributions that you bring to the table or they would have done it in a very, very different way. And so they don't really understand why you drag your feet or they don't understand why you don't take the initiative or they don't understand why you're doing it, you know, that specific way. And so it's a major conflict regarding how we're doing things and who's contributing what. And for the contribution, it could be, you know, uh, manpower. What are we investing our time in? And, um, you know, I'm doing all of this, I'm taking care of the kids, I'm taking care of the household, and I'm taking care of my responsibilities. What are you doing? And so there's conflict regarding contributions. Um, it could also be financial in nature. And it can also be, you know, just um, the, the, the things that we have to do to sustain and maintain a household or a relationship. And the person that you're dealing with, this is not somebody that backs down from a conflict. And I feel like, in a way, the, the communication between the two of you reveals a lot of things that you wanted to sweep under the rug. A lot of things that you know to be true, but you're, you know, you're, you're trying your best to manage it. And, and you're telling yourself, um, you know, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But this person is already at the bridge waiting for you. Like, what's the next step? You know, are you going to uh, do something about this? Or do I need to intervene and step in? So if it was like a past conflict, I feel like it's resurfacing for this week. If it is a conflict that, um, you know, kind of like was never properly dealt with in the past, I feel elements of it coming into the picture. So I just want you to, you know, really think about res uh, resolving these things because it seems very cyclical. And I feel like there is a sense of defensiveness about you coming in for this week. And so... I, I'm just sensing that somebody has touched a sore spot, okay? So let me show you the, the cards here. I have here the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords, once again, it is a conflictual type of a card, okay? Ideological differences between you and another person. You could be dealing with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And the way that they're coming at you is this, the Ten of Wands. They're feeling very, very much alone in this relationship. Like, I'm doing all the work, you know, what are you doing? And they're feeling almost like the distribution of work is not fair or the distribution in the level of investment in this relationship is not fair. They also have a lot of um, things that they're trying to take care of, that they're trying to move along, that they're trying to, I, I feel like, you know, move from one place to the next or move physical items from one place to the next, and they're really, really struggling. So with the Five of Swords, this is like too much has been said. Too many things that the other person, too, too many things that we, you know, already know about ourselves. And for example, for example, if you know that you take a long time to make a decision, the other person is kind of rushing you and they're getting agitated and you know they're pointing things out about you that you would rather it's like a sore spot okay and they keep poking at that sore spot to get you to do something so i feel like for many of you you're in a relationship with somebody and the pacing of the relationship is very 
off kilter or very uneven. So I have here air sign, air sign Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, as well as fire sign Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And the nature of these two, um, you know,、uh, signs is that they get things started, they get things moving. They're very, very decisive, and they are quite impatient. And you know, dealing with these characters as a Cancerian person, you can feel very intimidated. You can feel almost as if they're constantly rushing you when you're not ready. And you guys like to take your time, and you like to do something once the logistics have been planned out. And as a result of it, I feel like they're kind of rushing you, and you're not comfortable being rushed, and it can create a lot of frustration. Where you don't feel like you, you feel like you want to slow things down, and you want things to be kind of stable and 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 stale. And but even then, it's on your own time frame. It's like I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Whereas the other person, it's just like let's do this, let's move things along. And so. The conflict is ideological differences. It's the way that we physically do things. It's the way in which we get responsibilities taken care of. It's the way in which we handle responsibilities. But more than anything, your partner is telling you, you know, be decisive with this Five of Swords, and they're also telling you, move. So I feel as if somebody is just rushing somebody else. And I feel like the person that you're dealing with, they have so much on their plate, and you know they're trying to. This is not a smart way to do things. They're trying to do things all at once rather than slowing things down and you know doing it like pieces at a time. So this is like working hard rather than working smart. And you know there's a better way to do things. So I, I just feel like on the mundane level. Arguments over who's doing what, arguments over techniques, arguments over methodologies, and it's very, very context specific, and it's very individual specific. So they're doing things in a different manner, and I feel as if all of these things are coming to light mainly because you do have a romantic partner that you really deeply care about, and the two of you. We have the Justice card, and it is actually showing up twice. Okay. The two of you are trying to make things work. The two of you are trying to find the best way to reach some type of an equilibrium, to reach some type of a compromise or a consensus, so that one person doesn't feel like they're shouldering the the burdens of the relationship, while the other person feels like, okay, we need to kind of slow things down on my timeline, on my time frame. So there's a lot here to be said about contracts. There's a lot here to be said. About you know、uh, balancing out things, reaching equilibrium, as well as reaching some type of harmony in a relationship. For many of you, this can also indicate to me some type of a separation or a divorce. Two people signing contracts for a new job, a new house, a new start in their own life. But I also sense you know like.、Um, Divorces, separation, bustling the the kids around from different、uh, household, from mom and dad, or you know,、uh, joint custody issues, co-parenting issues, and all of that. And you could be involved with somebody who has children, and you don't have your own children, and so your time is a little bit freer. Whereas they're bogged down with a lot of responsibilities, you know, parenting, co-parenting, child rearing, and just a lot of things going on in their lives, and you don't understand why they're constantly rushing around or dashing around from here to there. And there is also the sense of like not knowing、um, when you're gonna see your crush or your romantic partner because they have a lot, so many things going on, and you're. You're thinking they're emotionally not invested in you, or you might even start to wonder: Are they exclusive to me, or are they dating other people? Because they possibly can't be that busy, but I feel like they are. Okay, so、um, if it's a crush that you're, you know, if it's somebody that you're recently dating and you're fi- finding out that oh, they're not really spending a lot of time with me. I don't feel like you should, you know, think about worst case scenarios. They're not seeing somebody else. I feel like they're just handling things the best way that they can. The partner 
and the reason I mentioned the、um, the air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. This is the partner that you're dealing with, and I, I love these cards. They're so beautiful, like the the depictions.、Um, usually, in the you know traditional Rider Waite deck, the Queen of Swords is somebody who's very very cutthroat. Okay, she's very blunt. She's very honest, and she is she can be a little bit of、um, a know it all, but she knows what she wants. And she doesn't really allows、uh, excuses or people with、um, a lot of、um, people who make excuses. You know the victim mentality. She's very, very just、uh, my way or the highway. But I feel like with this deck, this is a better depiction of her. Everything is very cool and calm, and just the the blue energy. It indicates to me somebody that you know they don't mind getting their hands dirty. If something needs to be done, they get things done, and they initiate things in their lives. But with this deck and with this depiction, it's somebody who is very, very soft inside. So even though she's surrounded by this blue, by this icy, cool exterior. She still has a really soft heart. She is very understanding, and she is she can be, you know,、um, she can see things in other people's perspective, which denotes to me that there needs to be better communication between you and this person. And so the response, you know, if they're asking you, "Hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that?" and if your response is silence, I feel like that's where they draw up their sword, and that's where they can get very、um, aggressive because they don't understand why the communication stopped, or they don't understand why you're not taking the time to explain or communicate with them. So you might have somebody like this, and this、uh, I usually think of it as an ex-wife and ex-spouse as well, where they have their guard up whenever they're dealing with you. But if you can rationally explain something to them, then okay, I'm on board because deep down they do have a good heart, and they can be very understanding. But whatever logic. Whatever reason, whatever you know, rationale you have for the decisions that you make, it has to pass that common sense test. And they're very good at giving advice as well. So if you're the one that's dealing with a lot of things in you, in in your life, and you don't know how to get all everything taken care of or everything done in a timely manner, this is somebody that can give you great advice and great insights into how to improve your work processes. And I know that's not extremely you know romantic to say, but I feel as if there is some type of a soulmate aspect here, and this is. You wanting to give to the person, but I feel like they're kind of、um, telling you that you know this is not enough. You need to do more. You need to give more. So it could be giving money for when it comes to child custody to like an ex-spouse. It could be、uh, chipping in with the responsibilities of child rearing with somebody that you have children with, and for whatever reason, they feel like you're not contributing enough, or they feel like they're very much alone in the experience, and they don't feel like you're giving them enough. So, if this is a romantic love relationship, they need a lot more commitment from you, and they're going to make it known. So, so I feel like the reading overall is very clear. In that somebody is going to demand, they're going to be making demands. They're going to be telling it as it is, and whatever conflict you've had with them, I do see it surfacing. But it's the same argument. So find a way to resolve it. Find a way to communicate. And final, and and I know that you guys, you know, you tend to clam up, and、um, a lot of the times too, you can be very, very indecisive. Okay, so with this Libra and energy,、um, heavily with the Justice card showing up twice, I just feel like you're dragging your feet and you're not able to、um, agree with another person. But all they need from you, they don't need promises. They don't need you know grandiose gestures. They just need to understand where you're coming from, and once you can express that. Then they're going to be a lot more lenient. They just don't understand what's happening, and they don't understand why the give and take or the the amount of investment we're putting into this situation is so off kilter and unbalanced. 
So in other areas of your life, we have here the Three of Swords. So let me just, um, I pulled out two cards to clarify this first, just to see what you're dealing with. And we have here the Ace of Swords, as well as the Two of Pentacles. Um, for those of you who are students, okay, this is like not getting the grade that you want. This is a card here about uh, studying, about making, um, you know, like those, um, what are those, they're like Scantron multiple choice types of tests. Being able to clearly uh, comprehend and read information or to be able to clearly disseminate information or to analyze information. So there's something off here when it comes to the education sector and that's the message I'm getting. As well as for some of you, uh, finances, okay? Having a clear picture as of um, your about your financial situation. Um, talking to a financial advisor even, taking out a loan, taking out a mortgage, taking out a car payment, financing something where all the finance, financial resources are not there. And I feel like you have to, you know, shift things around or you have to come to terms and, 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 and face head on regarding your financial situation. So I feel like uh, some of you might need to, you know, go to a bank for a loan, might need to go to a credit union, might need to um, talk to a financial advisor about some of the investment plannings or whether or not you are on track. And I also see a lot of discussions here with the court system, with the justice card. So this is like uh, child support, alimony, um, splitting and dividing assets between two people and have trying to have everything sorted out and I feel as if somebody is asking for additional financial resources or financial support and somebody is kind of holding back okay so if this is a business loan and for example if you're aiming for you know 100% of the loan to, to get finance or to get uh, a mortgage or whatever it is to get some big ticket item um, I feel as if you might be able to get, you know, 40% of it based on your credit score and or you might need to finance the, the rest, which is 60% or vice versa, getting 60% in financial assistance and then you have to pay the rest, the, the rest of the 40%. So I see big elements here of financing uh, financial institutions, needing to sort out your financial obligations or needing to divide up your assets. I also see an element of you swirling away money so that other people don't see the paper trail or swirling away money and hanging on very very tightly to your financial resources and being quite stressed out about it so overall uh, cancers this is a good week for you to straighten out some things in your life ask people for help if they have like uh, that financial savviness or even if they have like um, you know if their life is going really really smoothly and I f you feel like you're being rushed, you don't need to make up your mind, okay? You're dealing with somebody who just wants some answers. So if you can tell them, you know, I'm just really overwhelmed right now. I have a lot on my mind. I have a lot of work that I need to take care of. I have school, I have tests, I have exams. I have this mortgage that's looming over my head. I'm really just stressed out. And I feel like for Cancerian men out there, um, you're, you, you pride yourself on being able to take care of people and, you know, women included, but I feel so more so for the men, you really pride yourself on your ability to take care of people. And you feel like when I nurture somebody or to be a good nurturer or a caretaker means to be financially responsible for that person. And that's not always the case, you know, in relationships, we need to kind of balance out the responsibilities and we need to also learn to step up when our partner is down and vice versa, ask our partner for help when we are inundated with too many things on our plate. So I feel like you're trying to do things all on your own or your partner, who's also very, very independent. They're trying to do things all on their own. And if you're dealing with someone who's very independent, they will only ask for help when they're physically incapable of doing it. And so you also have to un keep that in mind when they're reaching out and asking for something. It's not because of, um, it's not because, you know, they don't want to do it themselves or they don't want to get their hands dirty. It's just that 
they really need help. And then for you as well, you know, it's it's not your responsibility to take care of every little thing. It's not your responsibility to take care of another person. And so don't put that burden on yourself, and don't feel like you're alone in it. It's a partnership for a reason. Okay. Um, and then for others who are dealing with financial issues, I feel like talking to a financial planner, getting things sorted out. I don't feel that it's as bad as you think it is, because we have a lot of sleepless nights here, a lot of stress, a lot of strain, and I also feel like arguments um, falling on top of that stress that you're already dealing with. It doesn't really contribute to anything, and so if you are dealing with financial hardships. There's a payment plan. This is a payment plan where you can kind of、um, hold back on spending so that you can meet the quota, so that you can meet the requirement. So I feel like there is reprieve. There is some type of a resolution, and it doesn't even have to be that painful. So in your mind, in your head, in your thought processes, you feel like, oh no, the situation is so dire, is so bad, and so you try to sweep it under the rug. When in fact, if you bring it to the light of day, if you can ask somebody for advice who can dish out really good financial advice, they're gonna、uh, paint you a picture where they're just like, "Oh, I've seen worse. It's not gonna be that bad." Does that make sense? So reach out and get some assistance for this week, okay? And reach out and help somebody if they're asking for assistance, because I'm sensing it's going to, it's not as bad as it seems, and I feel like you're dealing with some. People who who are actually quite sincere, and they're dealing with a lot too. Okay, so I hope the reading is helpful for you guys, Cancers, and、uh, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, hopefully this energy will clear up, and、uh, hopefully you know if whatever you're dealing with,、um, find some assistance to alleviate the situation. Okay, because I I feel like the financial stress very often for、um, for you guys for Taurus and also for、um, What is the other sign? Not so much Libra. I feel like for you guys and for Taurian people, when your financial situation is off kilter, it affects your personal relationships. Okay, so just be careful about that. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.